Good morning. Good morning. And the Lord be with you. And a very warm welcome to everyone as we gather in the Lord's house for worship today. Uh, just a few announcements as we begin. First, a reminder that there is an elders meeting right after worship today. Uh, we'll gather in classroom two. Uh, Donna Gray's funeral service will be this Friday at 2 p.m. Anyone can please make it. In case you didn't notice when you pulled in today, the fence project is complete. Looks good out there. So, where's Frank? Hiding. Hiding. Okay, well, thank you, Frank, for a good job. <laughs> um, but it looks very nice. Um, and a reminder that we have the men's breakfast and Bible study this Saturday, 8 a.m. over at the Cold Harbor Restaurant, and then 9 around 9 a.m. we'll be back here for the Bible study part. Anything else we need to share this morning? Yes. John, I just want to thank you for your prayers and your cards and calls, um, especially to Debbie and the kitchen crew that provided such a nice lunch for us recently. We really do thank you. Well, God's blessings and God's peace to you. Anything else we need to share? If not, as we move into worship, today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and you're going to be hearing from Isaiah 55 and hearing from our gospel reading today, God's ways are not our ways. Thanks be to God for that. God's ways are great mercy and compassion on his people, beyond our comprehension and beyond our understanding, and it's in him that we have our assurance <coughs> and hope. With that thought in mind, let's stand and sing our opening hymn.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ, and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy.
thanksgiving. And all the name of the Lord. What shall I render to the Lord? For all his sacrifice to me. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And all the name of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord. Is the death of the saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And all the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. chapter 55 seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord for as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having more confidence in the Lord, by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be in all shame, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened at anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please rise. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Alleluia. By grace you have been saved through faith. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour. And you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat? But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And we join together in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, the very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. And was crucified also for us in the conscious pilot. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And ascended into heaven. And sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead. Whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. At this time I invite you children who are here to come forward for the children's message. everyone today. Good. Nice to see all of you today. I wanted to ask you some questions. Who has a job? 
Which of you works for a living? None of you? I bet you have jobs you have to do at home, though, right? What kind of jobs do you have to do at home? You have to make your bed. You have to clean up your room. You have any jobs you do? A lot of jobs, yeah. Just a few, okay. <laughs> Can't remember them all, okay. You have to wash the dishes, okay. Now, do you get an allowance for that or something? Or is that just part of what you do? You do, okay. So, in our gospel reading today, it's talking about people coming to work. Now, do you think someone who works all day long, 12 hours long, should get paid the same amount as someone who worked one hour? No. Okay. No? Okay. Well, that's the, the point of today's gospel reading, actually. And it's talking not really about working, because when we work, we usually get paid. The more hours you work, the more you get paid, right? That's the way this world works. You, you come to work for an hour, you get 10 or $15 or whatever the going rate is, and you work eight hours, you get eight times as much, so a lot more. But in God's kingdom, what he's talking about today in this parable of the laborers in the vineyard, it's called. The people who work one hour get paid exactly the same amount at the end of the day as those who worked all day long. And that's just unthinkable for people. We, we don't think that way. Our world doesn't work that way. But what God is telling us is that God's love is so great for us that those who come to faith in Jesus Christ, even at the last minute, receive the same from God as those who have been Christians all their life. And that means forgiveness of everything that we've done wrong, our sins, and it also means that we get to be with Jesus in eternity. So what our gospel is telling us is really good news. It seems unthinkable to us, but this is God's way of doing things. And he wants to show his love and his mercy to each of us so much that no matter when we come to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, believing how he gave his life for our sins, we have forgiveness and we have life in his name. That's God's way of doing things. And that's different than the way that we would normally do things or think of things. But it's much, much better what he has in mind. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being so much greater than we are. Thank you for giving your life for us. And thank you that no matter when we come to believe, we know we have forgiveness and eternal life in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up.
important article of the Apostles' Creed and its meaning today. The third article of the Apostles' Creed outlines the work of the Holy Spirit and presents the ways in which the Spirit commends the love of God to us and for us and in us in this world and in the one that is to come. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me with the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me in all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's message is from the Old Testament reading, Isaiah chapter 55, a chapter that is absolutely filled with gospel, uh, pointing us to the mercy that our, our Lord has on us. Also, we'll be considering parts of our gospel reading from Matthew 20 today. I share with you these words. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are, are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you hear these words today about God's ways being so different than our ways, the one underlying message that we all ought to be hearing is that now is the time to hear God's word. Now is the time to hear his call for repentance and faith. Now is the time to become a part of his kingdom, to to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and to be his now and forever. The good news that you get certainly in here and in the gospel message is that it's never too late. Now is the time, but it's also never too late until the end of our earthly life. That gospel reading that we had today, the, the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, says that the, the master goes out, certainly that is God, overseeing his vineyard, and he calls laborers to come and work. He finds them waiting wherever it is that the laborers would normally wait when they're looking for some place to go to work. And he goes and everyone who's willing to come, he sends out into the vineyard to do his work, to be in the faith and to share the good news of of the faith is the idea that we have going on there, working in God's vineyard. But it says he comes back later, at the third hour. I don't know when that is, nine o'clock, maybe noon, whatever it is that, that they're talking about here. More people are waiting and idle and not working. He hires them. Go out, work in the vineyard. And he comes back again later and later, all the way up to the 11th hour. The 12th hour is the end of the day. Up to the 11th hour. Come on out and go to work. Why are you sitting idle? Now is the time that, that you can go to work and, and be at work in my kingdom. And they go. And then at the end of the day, it's time to pay the laborers. Now those who had gone to work first thing in the morning had agreed on the amount they were going to be paid. It doesn't sound like later there was any discussion. Just at the end of the day, they're going to get what's fair. And the master decides the 
end of the day that those who had worked one hour received a denarius. And you can just imagine, if everyone's watching and knows what's happening, exactly as the text tells us, they're thinking, well, I'm, I'm going to get more. I worked all day. And this slug only worked one hour. I'm going to be really doing well at the end of the day. And they all get a denarius. Every one of them. No matter how long they had worked. And in our way of thinking, that's just not fair. Like I was talking with the kids, you can imagine how your children might have reacted if one did all of their work faithfully all day long and the other was maybe more like I was as a child and when you finally got around to it, did at least some of your chores. But you all got your full allowance at the end of the day. That's just not fair, is it? That's our way of thinking and our way of doing things. But what God's telling us is that his way of doing things is different. He desires to be merciful. He's all loving. He wants us to be in his kingdom. So much so that even if we come to faith at the last minute, at the end of the day, he's still going to give us the full reward, the full forgiveness in Jesus Christ and eternal life in heaven. Now that doesn't mean that we ought to wait till the last minute and then come to faith. What it means is for those who are still outside of the kingdom today, the master is still calling. He wants them to hear the good news. He wants them to know Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior and receive the full reward that he has for them. But the big contrast in our readings today, God's ways and our ways. And how much better God's ways are than ours. So much so that we have to stop and acknowledge that we don't really understand them at times. And God doesn't really expect us to understand in full because he hasn't revealed absolutely everything to us. What we need to know about God, what he wants us to know about him, he's revealed in his word. What we need to know for our salvation, he has revealed his word and that Holy Spirit continues to work through his word in our lives and what he's also telling us is that he has work for us to do you see that's what the laborers in the vineyard are doing they're not being rewarded for their work they're being given a gift from God the gift is forgiveness and life but he's given us work to do and that work is to live in the word and through our life and words and deeds to share the word with those around us that more and more would, would be blessed by what God has for them, bringing them into the kingdom by the work of the Holy Spirit and encouraging them in their faith. Now, we oftentimes will, will make the mistake, it's easy to do as, as human beings, of thinking that somehow God is going to have more favor on us because we were in the kingdom all our life. Some of you are like me, been a Lutheran all your life, always been a part of the church. Some have come later in life. Does that mean some deserve more than others? Does that mean that some are going to get a higher place in heaven because or, than others? God's word isn't clear exactly how heaven is going to be organized. Certainly God is a God of order. But the point of our text today is we're all getting the same reward. And it's a great reward. It's a reward that is filled with hope. It's undeserved. But it's ours. Because God chooses to give it. See, that's what the master was telling those who had worked all day. 
Can I not do what I want with that which is mine? It's mine to give. And if I choose to give it, what should it matter to you? But sometimes we do begrudge others coming to faith late. We begrudge or think that we deserve far more because we've been faithful. And God says no. What do we all deserve? Nothing but God's wrath and punishment. That's what we deserve. Because while we're still here on earth, we still have our sinful human nature. And we sin much daily. But what you heard in that explanation of the third article, the Holy Spirit still comes to us. And the Holy Spirit works through word and sacrament in our lives opening our eyes to who Jesus is and what he's done for us, instilling that faith within us and keeping it strong and healthy, that we would be God's now and always. And that's what God's desire really is for each of us. He wants us to come into his kingdom early, that we would know his peace in this life, that we would have the benefits of that faith, all throughout this earthly life. Because there are benefits to that. Knowing him. Having his comfort. Being able to live out our life daily. In the hope of life eternal. In a world that we can see perishing around us. But no matter what. God's desire. God's ways. Always desire that more and more will come into his kingdom. Early or late, he wants everyone to know Jesus Christ and to be saved. That means you and me and everyone. In Jesus' name, amen. And we rise for prayer. In our prayers today, in addition to those listed in your worship folder, we want to pray for Cheyenne Adams, granddaughter of Melody Baber. She's going to be having outpatient back surgery uh, later this week. We want to pray for April Sethman, daughter of Roger Sethman. April has been hospitalized again. And we pray for John and Alva Hess, cousins of Eleanor Gilmain. Uh, they are ill. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, grant that we would rejoice in the light of Christ and his salvation, and that sinners would find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, grant that in Christ we may seek you while you may be found, and call upon you while you are near, forsaking all wicked ways and unrighteous thoughts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, embolden our congregation and all sister churches throughout the world to confess the truth steadfastly and to witness boldly to our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty Lord, bless this nation and all people in their rightful callings. Be with all who lead our nation, especially President Biden and Governor Yunkin. Grant that we may serve our neighbors in love, and that all authorities would exercise their callings with humility and wisdom on behalf of the defenseless. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for the gift of health. Hear our prayers on behalf of the sick, the aged, the infirm, the mourning, or the dying. Today we especially remember Judy, Frank, Eleanor, David, Kirsten, Thelma, Cheyenne, April, Jeff, John, Alva, Diane, Jean, Midge, Liz, Diane, Norris, Lewis, Helen, Terry, Ruth, Mark, Kevin, Paul, and Mary, Faye, Jackson, Butch, Anita, Patrick, 
Glenn, Ryan, and Stuart. Faye, Pastor John, Eleanor, Todd, Buddy, Cindy, Cindy, Lina, Sherry, Tommy, Tony, Elsie, Mark, and Michelle. Lucille, Paul, Anne, Billy, and Tammy. Linda and Christy. Grant them healing in accord with your will and grace to sustain them in their needs. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our military and police, wherever they might be serving. Keep them safe as they carry out their duties and return them safely to their homes once again, we pray. Be especially with Troy, Brandon, Andrew, Jeremy, Jordan, Kyle, Garrett, Meredith, Vic Jr., and Mike. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for those who serve as missionaries and in interna international ministries. Be especially with Pastor Matt Wood and family and Pastor Gustavo Maita and family. Help them in their daily life as they preach and proclaim the gospel message. Grant that through them that your power would be at work, leading many to faith. Lord, in your mercy. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our health care workers. Keep them safe as they carry out their duties and continue to help them to be a blessing to us. Be with Hannah, Ashley, Tammy, Sarah, Deborah, Kyle, Brittany, Amy, Samantha, and Tia. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please rise. you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him <coughs> our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which has been poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.
destroying this body and blood, strengthen and preserve it with the one true thing from this life and on into life everlasting. Part in peace. Serve the Lord. This body and blood strengthen and preserve you with the one true thing from this life and on into life everlasting. Part in peace, serve the Lord.
all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Um.